Hi, my YouTube friends. Welcome. And I'm Leticia from Jewels for You, and I'm very happy to be back. And I want to wish you a very belated Happy New Year. I hope you had great time with family, friends, or, or traveling, uh, whatever, whichever way you celebrate your festivities. And I wish you, um, I hope that you had the greatest time. So um, we start fresh with my best wishes for, uh, for this new year. We start fresh, a brand new year, and let's make the best of it. So um, last year, just before Christmas, I had a lot of issues with my internet. And I wasn't able to upload my last two videos to close up the year. And I'm still having issues with my internet. Um, but if you're watching this video, that means my upload was successful. So um, I'm crossing my fingers here. Um, if I remember well, I was going to show you how to make your own jump rings. And I also had two more fast and easy projects for last minute gifts for Christmas. Well, um, that didn't happen, but I will show you how to make your own jump rings. And then I'm going to show you how to make um, this lovely component, this one right here. And I'm going to uh, give you several suggestions on how to use it as well as different color paths and um, I'm going to show you another size and give you suggestions on how to make uh, either smaller sizes or bigger sizes. So let's get started, okay? First we're going to make the jump rings and as you can see on your screen I have this um, uh, doohickey, I don't know, it's a thing. I bought this like about uh, maybe seven years ago, uh, maybe a little bit more. I saw it at Michael's. I had no idea what it was for, but if it was in the jewelry section, I imagined that um, I would sooner or later need it. So I bought it. I'm missing actually one of the mandrels. I'm, miss I'm missing the, the thinnest one. I was using it to make some flowers, but um, and then I don't know where I left it. But it came with four mandrels, and this is the thickest one. It's about, um, let's see, compared to a big pen, it's about more or less the, um, it's a little bit smaller than the width of a big pen. So um, this is the thickest one and the thinnest one um, is of course like about um, three-fourths the size of this one, okay? I use this one mostly and uh, this, this one as well. I use the smallest one very very little only when I'm married um, when I'm making very small gifts I mean very small necklaces for uh, like young girls like uh, um, little girls that's when I use them or when I'm making very dainty bracelets but I really don't like to use you know such small jump rings because if they happen to op open you could uh, easy you could easily lose them anyway but let's get back to this um, this is by Beetalon um, I haven't seen it at Michael's. I haven't really looked around, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. But um, maybe it was in the, um, uh, in the findings section of, of the jewelry, of jewelry, of the jewelry section of Michael, at Michael's. So it's, this is made out of thick acrylic and it has a screw here um, to, of course, put these mandrels in. And it also has a small hole where you insert your wire uh, to, you know, make your jump rings. And I'm going to very fast, in a very fast way, I'm going to show you how to make your jump rings. This is like really basic. So you put this in and um, you're going to, I just have one piece of wire. Um, it's not very straight, but 
it'll serve my purposes. This is just for demonstration purposes, okay? So, um, you put the wire through this little hole from the top towards the bottom and you just hold it in the back to, you know, to keep it in place and then you start wrapping you start wrapping your wire around your um, mandrel you give it like about two or three turns and you push it down this is oh I'm sorry I forgot to tell you um, the best wire to use to make your jump rings is um, a 20 gauge or a 22 gauge those are the best two. I wouldn't go any thinner than 22 because then the um, jump rings would be a little bit too soft. This is an 18 gauge wire and it's pretty thick. So uh, for some projects it's not going to do but this was the one that I found closest to me. So this is the one that I took just, you know, just to show you how to use this. But um, I also use... Um, 18 gauge wire sometimes when I need a really strong sturdy jump ring I use 18 gauge so I wouldn't go thicker than 18 but and no thinner than 22 okay so the next thing is you're going to put your finger upwards through this hole and um, holding on to the wire like this between you know you're gonna um, Press with your with your thumb in the mandrel and you're going to hold on to your wire between your uh, ring finger and your middle finger and you're going to guide everything with your index. So uh, you're just going to turn this. Okay, you're going to turn it. It's very sort of primitive even, you know, and uh, you're going to stop every now and then, you know, to push with your fingers. You're going to be pushing down so that the rings keep together. OK, now, uh, right now I'm having a hard time because this is an 18 gauge wire and it's pretty strong. So uh, once you make enough jump rings, I mean, you can fill this mandrel up if you want to. If you want, uh, you know, to st stock up, stock up on jump rings. But if you only need a few, I mean, um, you can stop whenever you wish. But when you stop, uh, I this is important. You have to stop where you started. So I started to wrap here, and this is where I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm going to stop right there, and then I'm going to take my cutters. And where are my cutters? Oh, great. Oh, here they are. Okay. So I'm going to cut the excess wire. Okay, let me just wrap a few more. Just so that I can... Okay. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to cut the excess wire... there and then I'm going to cut from here so I can free it from um, the mandrel and I just slip it out okay later on we'll take care of this we you know just take out the um, piece of of wire that is there you know throw it away and just unscrew your mandrel uh, but here <clears throat> what I want you to see is that um, we're going to cut, let me close in a little bit more. Okay, so this is where I cut at the top. Okay, and I want to cut at the same, right at the same level at the bottom. Okay. There. Okay, so um, then we're going to take our cutters and we're going to start cutting up towards um, 
the top of your um, coil and you're going to try to cut one or two at a time you know take your time in doing this because otherwise you're going uh, your cuts are going to come out like in a very funky diagonal uh, shape and they're not gonna be very nice looking I mean they're uh, you're gonna have to make a di another cut in order to straighten them out so take your time do one at a time or two at a time uh, but no more than that because then your um, cuts are going to be really weird unless you have a very big cutting tool that can take that can do um, you know that can cut several at a time then um, that would be okay but if you don't just cut one or two at a time okay and so here we have all our jump rings that we just cut and the only difference that um, that you're going to see between these let me just um, zoom out a little the only difference that you're going to see between these and the store-bought is that these are gonna have like they're gonna be open right from here because that's where you cut but besides that they're perfect they're they're perfectly useful I mean you can use them and you know you can um, take the liberty of using the the gauge the gauge that you want you know for strong jump stronger jump rings sometimes the jump rings that the, you buy at the store you know that are already made aren't that sturdy aren't that you know aren't that great so if you make your own you can make your own jump rings with this now um since i'm pretty sure that most of you don't have this device um i i i do recommend that you look around your house maybe you can use a skewer um, you know uh, to wrap around it and it'll serve its purpose um, you can also use rounded out pens um, maybe some um, pencils that are round you can use paint brushes that are thin and have a part you know and if they're rounded out as well there I have this <clears throat> strange pen that looks like a syringe but it's a pen <laughs> and it has this part here uh, that is pretty straight you know it's um and sometimes I use this as well because I don't have this with this is um this is uh, wider than this mandrel so sometimes I use this one I also use um, this tool it has it's a wooden tool it has it's for embossing and um, it is it's very wide it's you know when I really need bigger bigger jump rings I use this one as well I use sharpie markers so just look around your house and I'm sure that you will be able to find something uh, that you can use to make your own jump rings so I hope um, you like this small tutorial on how to make your own jump rings and now uh, we're going to jump to how to make the component now for this component you're going to need 15 size 8 uh, millimeter size 8 pearls uh, or any round bead you can also use crystals if you want I use a lot of pearls um, especially to make this component because people seem to like it in pearls so um, you're going to need 15 of these and you're going to need 30 uh, 4 millimeter crystals and they could be in, in a coordinating color they could be in a contrasting color now I made other components I made 
this one that is pink uh, it's like a peach pink and it the crystals are like um, I don't know they're like a dark topaz color they're very very pretty and very very shiny they have an AB finish um, and I also made this other one this other one is with darker um, purple beads and these crystals are in um, they're sort of like a dark purple but they have like tones of gray but since they have they also have an AB finish they um, they look very pretty and the combination looks gorgeous so um, you can I also made this smaller one this smaller one was made with size 5 pearls um, I think they're size 5 I'm pretty sure they're size 5 they're um, size 5 and the center I made it with size 8 um, seed beads these are Toho's and um, I don't like very much how it came out so maybe you could substitute the seed beads for I'm going to try to substitute the seed beads for three millimeter bicones um, or rounds uh, they're uh, more or less the same size I have these over here they're um, three millimeter they're three millimeter polished round glass beads so um, they're more or less the same size as the well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to take them out but I measured them and they're the same size so uh, and these would look much better but I couldn't find I, I don't have any in like a blue color that would go good that would look well with these pearls so I use the seed beads but um, these are two different sizes you can make even smaller ones I have these um, let me show you I have some smaller pearls and you could use 11-0 seed beads okay these are size I don't know what size these are I think these are size 3 pearls I think these are size 3 these are um, size 3 pearls and with these you can use 11 -0 seed beads um, you know to put in between and they would have to be either Miyuki or Toho's uh, to so that they it could uh, keep its pretty shape round shape mostly because you know that when you use just regular seed beads they are not very uniform in size and um, shape so um, I would recommend Miyuki's or Toho's but for now oh, we're also I'm sorry let's just continue with the tutorial um, so you're gonna need 15 of these 30 of these and we're going to use monofilament which is um, you know the like illusion cord and uh, you can use an eight pound test if you want a six or an eight pound test you know that I always use a high pound test this is a 12 this is a 12 pound test and um, I don't know why I just prefer to use something strong and <clears throat> we're also going to be using scissors a lighter uh, clear nail polish or super glue now this is optional but for me when I make the final knot on this on the on this component on these components uh, when I knot at the end when I finish them I really want to make sure they're not gonna be undone you know so um, I usually burn the ends that is my preferred method I use a fire uh, a lighter but you can also use clear nail polish or um, super glue and then cut off the ends okay so um, let's get started now to get started we're going to cut 
about um, I don't know um, 20 inches of, of the monofilament or the illusion cord I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm gonna cut it okay and we're going to start let me put this aside and we're going to put one aside and here okay and I'm gonna close it zoom in so that you can see what I'm doing and hopefully you will so uh, first of all we're going to start we're going to start um, put, we put we're going we have we're going to have a right thread and a left thread and I just want to clear something up before I continue for those of you that um, are watching my channel for the first time monofilament and or illusion cord is like fishing thread you know that transparent one and that's the kind I use it's this one um, this one right here I'm sorry it's upside down uh, it's Omniflex and um, it you can get it at Walmart or uh, any fishing supply place and it's a 12 pound test but I have found that the Supple Max by Beetalon also has a 12 pound test you can see right there right there it says 12 pound so um, the illusion cord I have this one by Beatsmith if you want to use a six pound this is a six pound test okay so um, whichever one you wish to use this this one is much much thinner than the one I use of course and much easier to maneuver with but like I said I prefer to use a thicker one I like to um, be sure that my projects will won't be that frail so let's continue um, you're going to have these two threads one is going to be on your right hand the other one is going to be on your left hand and I will be guiding you through the whole process we're going to thread on our right hand on our right thread one um, one crystal one crystal one pearl one crystal one pearl oh, I'm, I'm sorry that one fell out let me just <clears throat> okay after the second pearl you're going to put in another crystal and your third pearl and through this third pearl you're going to cross your threads through it okay in this fashion you take your thread on the other side and pull And this is what you're going to have a triangle now before we continue I want to take my two threads put them together and pull to make sure that this triangle is right in the center of um, so that makes both our threads the same size the same length I'm sorry the same length so we're going to take again our right thread and we're going to thread one crystal one pearl
another crystal. Then we're going to take with our love thread one crystal. And we're going to pick up a third pearl. We're going to pick up a third pearl and cross our threads through it. Okay, and we pull our threads, and this is what we should have so far. Okay. Our bead, our threads are coming out from the top bead. Okay, so we're going to continue. We're going to take another crystal on our right thread. another pearl another crystal and in our left thread we're going to pick up one crystal and the third pearl and cross our threads through it one side and then towards the other side and pull our thread okay so here you're beginning to see your component take shape it's going to start to look a little bit it's, it's going to start to have a little bit of a curve and we already have four pearls in the center so that means we just we're just going to need one more pearl uh, to close it but let's continue right thread pick up another crystal a pearl another crystal then with our left thread we pick up a crystal and our last pearl cross our threads through it And pull okay this is what you should have so far okay so we have our component that has five pearls in the center four crystals on the outside we have four pearls with um, at, we have a crystal, a pearl, then two crystals, one pearl, two crystals, one pearl, two crystals, one pearl, and one crystal. So we're going with our inner thread, which is this one that's coming out of this pearl right here, this one. The, the, the thread is going inward. We're going to pick up our last crystal to close the center. And um, we're going to go down on this pearl right here. We're going to go down on it towards the bottom, just through the pearl. 
and in this manner we're going to we already have finished the center closing our center with five five crystals and five pearls now we're going to add with our right thread we're going to pick up another crystal okay this is a little bit too long okay here one crystal then with our left thread we're going to pick up another crystal so we have a crystal on each one of our threads okay I have it on okay there we have a crystal let them drop we have a crystal on each one of our threads right there okay right there then we're going to pick up a pearl and cross our threads through it and pull our thread and now we have finished the first part the top part of our component it looks like a star but as we pull our threads tighter you're going to notice that it's going to dome in see it's doming in okay so it's got sort of like a three-dimensional look okay so we're coming out from this bead we have both of our threads there so we're going to pick up again our right thread one crystal I'm sorry okay one crystal one pearl one crystal that's going to be on our right thread and with our left thread we're going to pick up a crystal and a pearl and in that pearl we're going to cross our threads Okay, there we go. And this is what your project should look like. Okay? So far. We're going to turn our work over to the other side. We're going to flip it. Sorry, we're going to flip it so that the pearl that the threads are coming out from It's not going to affect the dome in any way, you know, um, it's still going to be the same way. But uh, what we're trying to do here is make it easier on ourselves, especially if you're right-handed. So the threads should be coming out from this pearl on your right-hand side. Okay, so we're going to pick up, okay, we're going to um, close like bend over that part that we just made over the bottom part of our component like the, like so okay then we're going to pick up with our left thread with, I'm sorry with our right thread we're going to pick up one crystal okay one crystal and we're going to go through this bead right here okay let me see if you can see closer okay i just picked up this crystal this crystal right here 
and I'm going to go in through this bead okay just through the bead be careful that it doesn't go um, through the crystal because it does have a, the the monofilament does have a tendency to do that so it just goes through the pearl and we're going with that same thread we're going to pick up another crystal okay now with our top thread our inner thread we're going to pick up a crystal and our bead I mean our pearl I'm sorry our pearl and we're going to cross our threads through it and pull your threads okay we're going to pick up with our bottom thread this one right here our outer one we're going to pick up another crystal and once more go through the next bottom pearl And with that same thread, we're going to pick up another crystal. And drop it. Drop it down. Then with our top thread, our inner thread, we're going to pick up a crystal. Drop it. And another pearl and cross our threads through it and pull okay and now you can see how a component is beginning to take shape so with our outer thread we're going to pick up another crystal go through the next pearl the next bottom pearl and take up another crystal with that same thread with the outer with the one on the bottom with the outer thread then we're going to pick up a crystal with our inner thread, the top one. And we're going to take our last bead and cross our threads through it. Okay. So, I'm going to show you. On the top, we already have our five pearls, but we only have four crystals. And then we have this gap down here. We're missing a crystal here, because there's supposed to be four. We're missing one here, and we're missing one on this side as well. Okay, so let's continue. We're about to finish the top part. So, with the top thread, the inner thread, we're going to pick up our last crystal and we're going to go down on the next pearl, the first one that we started with. So, we're going to go down through the pearl only.
we're going to go down through the purl like that and pull our thread okay so now we have finished the top part we have finished the top part now we have to finish the bottom part so we're missing a crystal here like I said they're supposed to be four and we're missing a crystal here so we're going to start on this side on your right hand side um, with the thread we're going to pick up one more crystal and we're going to go through the pearl on the bottom okay and now we have four crystals there and then with the other thread that we took from the top that we took that we brought down from the top we're going to pick up our last crystal okay we're going to pick up our last crystal like so let's see And drop it and we're going to tie a knot because we're finished we make one knot and there so you can see this see our component is complete all, all around we're going to tie one knot and then we're going to tie a double knot and the way we do this is we cross our threads, we make a loop and we go through the loop once and we go through the loop twice with the same thread and we pull. And this is also called a surgeon's knot in case you hear it in other tutorials this is what they call a surgeon's knot this is what they're talking about when they say surgeon's knot okay a double knot now um for those of you that want to use the super glue or the nail polish this would be the right time to put it in that little knot just make put a little drop there and after it dries um which would be really fast especially you know if it's super glue um, then you cut your threads but since I don't use super glue or nail polish I'm just gonna cut my threads and then I'm going to burn with my lighter I'm going to burn the little um there are those little things that are sticking out. There you go. Oh, I got me anything wrong. My lighter doesn't work. Okay, let me use this one. Okay. There you go. You can't even see it. Okay, so this is our component, all finished, pretty. And, and now um, I'm going to show you. I had already showed you several color paths that you can use. You can basically use any color. Um, and any size of round bead. Um, I tried to make one with crystals, with these crystals that are like, um, like the ones that I call onions. They're grandels, I think. I think that's what they call them now. Um, but 
it didn't come out right so uh, you really have to use round beads um, round beads that could you know crystals round crystals or round pearls or any other kind of round bead um, and of course the crystals also would have to be either bicones or rounds so that they can maintain the nice shape of the other round beads okay so I showed you this one this one this small one and then I also showed you this one this purple one and I showed you um, the white one so I'm gonna put these aside for the moment and I'm going to show you what I did um, with this one with the purple one I used memory wire now memory wire comes like uh, let's see where's my memory wire okay, oh here it is memory wire comes like this and sometimes it comes a little in a bigger circle uh, when you want to use it for necklaces and it's called memory wire for a reason it's like a slinky <laughs> so um, it's called memory wire for a reason it maintains its shape and it's really really strong I mean um, it doesn't look that strong because it looks very thin but you have um, you know you have problems when you try to make like um, loops with it when you try to make spirals or whatever so if you want to make a bracelet this is I mean a, a wrap around bracelet this is the perfect wire for it and I think that my next video is going to um, be that I'm going to show you how to make a bracelet using memory wire um, but for now um, uh, this is one of the uses I found for um, for this component it could be for any of the ones that I made but just put a piece of memory wire around it and you can see that it's a little bit kinky um, let me zoom out a bit more there it has a few um, little kinks in it where I tried to straighten it out and I can't I, and I and you know I sort of succeeded in doing part of it but um, it does maintain its shape so if you put this around your neck you don't need a clasp it's going to stay around your neck believe me if anything it'll move around but um, you can add more beads to the side I just wanted to give you a fast idea I just put it through um, when you look at the component it has like it, on the bottom it ends in the four crystals but on the top it ends in a pearl it has a pearl opposite to these crystals so um, if you want your component to hang a little you're going to let the pearl leave the pearl on the top if you don't then you're going to um, put your wire through these two side crystal um, units right there and then it'll you know it'll um, stay like more towards the middle but right now I just put it through there and like I said I used the memory wire and I just used my round nose pliers to make some uh, you know two tiny loops just so that the component doesn't slip out and I put it around my neck and it stays around my neck so um, you don't need any clasps to you know to make this if you want to you can put more beads on the sides and it would make a very very pretty necklace you could even uh, put charms or whatever okay and then the other one that I made was with the um, with the pearls with the other uh, cream colored pearls was this necklace and um, 
Uh, in this one, I did what I told you before. I went through the, I left the pearl on the bottom and I went through the side to um, units so that it could be, it wouldn't be hanging so much, you know, like uh, it would be more on the neck, there would be more of the un of the component on the wire. For this, I used um, Samba Pro 49 strand clear medium um, nylon coated stainless steel beading wire. So this is beading wire, but it's a 49 strand. So um, this is pretty strong. I mean, this, um, it might not look it because it's not very, it doesn't look thick. It doesn't look like there's 49 strands in there. It really looks thin. This is what it looks like. And it's really very flexible. Um, but it is strong, believe me. I've tried it before. So um, I put what I did. Oh, sorry, the camera moved there. Okay. Um, what I did was I used a double jump ring. I used a double jump ring. First, I used a magnetic clasp, okay? Oh, okay. So I used a small magnetic clasp because I thought that was, you know, I like magnetic clasps. They keep your necklace pretty safe. You know, it's hard to... For it to come apart on you know they're a little bit stronger than um, using a clasp but anyway it depends on the kind of clasp that you use or toggle clasp and then I use the jump ring and then I use this double jump ring right here then I used a uh, crimp bead and then I used five uh, seed beads transparent just to you know not put the pearl next to the crimp bead just so that it wouldn't wear, you know, because sometimes the coating comes out. And then I I put 10 beads, 10, I'm um, sorry, 10 small pearls, 10 size 3 pearls, alternating with the 4 millimeter um, crystals that I used in the component. Then after that, I used 10 of the size 8 beads that I used in the component and uh, alternating also with the crystals and then I put my first component and then a crystal, a bee, a pearl, a crystal and then the second component a crystal, a pearl, a crystal and then the third component then I put another crystal, I continued with my 10 beads, with my 10 pearls and then I continued with my 10 smaller pearls. So that's how I made my necklace. And it looks, I think it looks beautiful. And um, this, you know, would easily look well uh, as a bridal necklace, I think. So uh, you would just have to make maybe a bracelet or maybe smaller earrings. With these size pearls, you could make smaller earrings. They would come around. They would come even smaller. They come up would come out smaller than this component right here. Compared to this, it would be smaller than that. It would be smaller. Okay. So I hope I showed you several several ways that you can use this. You can use this uh, like I like I had told you before. You could even use this as a ring. There are several tutorials out there on, um, there are a lot of tutorials actually on how to make a ring band, but you would, uh, I think you would need needle and thread. I'm not sure. I really, I, I'm not too much into rings, but, um, uh, at least not, you know, handmade ones. Um, so, uh, but I have seen a lot of tutorials around there. So I hope you liked this tutorial and I hope you liked the suggestions I gave you. If you did, please like my video 
and subscribe subscribe and uh, visit me on Facebook visit my fan page and if you make this if you make anything like this I'd love to see your work send it uh, to my send a picture to my email address and I will be posting it on my fan page on Facebook okay and um, all right and I will be you know showing it here and um, on YouTube so um, thank you very much for watching and next time um, if you want to work with me be sure to get yourself some memory wire and we're gonna make a very easy and fast bracelet okay and once more thank you for watching and I will see you next time bye now